Hi, Lindsay. Hi. Long oh. time no see. Oh. Hang on. Here we go. I won. I won. Thank you so much to the team from Rolling You Miss Adventures. That was so much fun. Ten dollar donation. Thank you guys so so much. So you see, we didn't even need you. We already crushed the donation without you. So you need me. <laughs> You'll always need me. That is so so true. How how are you? How are you? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm here. I'm okay. Don't turn on the stream. You're not. You, but I got all the all the images that you sent me. I've got over on the right hand side of the screen. Yeah, and I, I saw and I closed out. <laughs> uh, but, so Lindsay, for those of you, we've been talking about it all throughout the event and everything. But Lindsay joined us uh, with her husband Perry to close out last year's live stream for the cure. Now, when we first announced the event last year that we were coming back for around two, uh, Perry and Lindsay, first of all, they had me on their show. The pod stuff, all up in your pod stuff. I still mm-hmm. know that. And we talked to them about what do I smell like burning marshmallows? Oh. I didn't leave the stove on, did I? Oh, Dan, <laughs> it's not supposed to smell yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. But um, yeah, so they had me on their show. And um, wh- when it came time for live stream for the cure, when it came time to start, I had. You know, I asked them, I, you know, and they were immediately like threw themselves at me. They're like, we're being on it. Like th- I couldn't stop them. They're like, no, we're doing it. Mm-hmm. And they, um, when the merchandise came out, you'll see the picture floating around in here of the of last year's live stream for the cure shirts. Uh, as soon as merchandise it. went on sale and she's wearing it right here. Cause I didn't get my other one yet. Yeah. You you're not going to get it until literally everyone else. It's, um, it. I'm very upset about it. <laughs> we won't talk about it. Um, but, um, yeah, so they were the first ones to order the brand, the, the, the shirts. As soon as the merchandise went on sale, first ones, they were the first ones. They sent the picture. It was the first picture we posted of people wearing live stream for the cure to merchandise. And then Perry got sick and, and was diagnosed and everything. And I don't want to get too much into any of that stuff. It, it, it's all up to Lindsay, whatever she's going to talk about no, and whatnot. Okay. But, um, you know, when, when Perry, got diagnosed and everything i immediately was like guys here's your out i know you guys are going to be just insane everything that you guys are going to have going on and i said you know you guys don't have to do this if if you can't do it or if if you're not feeling up to it or whatever and they said no now we're coming on more than ever (laughs) oh yeah i already couldn't get rid of them and then they were like doubled down. They're like, no, we have to do this. And so what we did at the end of last year's event was we closed down donations after we hit our goal for, for cancer research Institute. And we opened up everything for Perry and Lindsay and people just somehow after the full weekend of events found more money to give to Perry and Lindsay, which was wonderful. We really appreciate mm-hmm. everybody that did that. And they closed out the show for an hour and a half and it was really, really wonderful. And, uh, after, you know, an, an eight month battle or so, give or take. It was exactly eight months to the exactly day. Exactly eight months to the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Perry's fight with cancer ended. And when I was putting this event together, number one, it was two things that were obvious that had to happen. Number one, we had to do it for Perry. Had to. Uh, he last year on the event, uh, just one thing he said to me that, that, that just stuck with me whenever he was on the segment with us was just that he was a huge fan of us for life. And, you know, we couldn't do this unless we did it for him, unless we did it in his honor and in his name. And I was like, I gotta have Lindsay back on the show. So I reached out to her and I was like, She's so swamped. At first, I waited because I was like, oh, my God, she's going to be so overwhelmed with so much going on. So I waited a while, and then I and then I sent her a message and everything, and she immediately, I think immediately agreed. She was like, yep, done. Yeah. <laughs> and and here you are to close that out. That was going to be a conversation. That was a <laughs> – I mean, I remember last year, Perry had already said, you know, we would be taking part in this year's event. Um, and so that was a – if I didn't hear from you, you would have heard from me. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's hard. It's this is the this is the first time I 
I've really done anything without him like this. And so that's a, I'm used to having him to bounce off of and um, those Making kind of appropriate jokes. And yeah. Um, he was, I kind of kept it more serious and he lightened it all up. And so that was, that was my only hesitation, but it wasn't even, I guess, really a hesitation because I knew I was going to do it. Um, I just knew it was going to be really tough. Um, and, uh, you know, and I know that he would, he would have wanted me to. And I know that if it was the other way around, he'd be right here and, Except he would be crying and I'm not yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> so oh. I mean, we, I, I knew, um, as talk started and, you know, I haven't really had anything to do with podcasting, um, at all. That, that's a, that was just our thing. And so that's been a tough one. And, but everybody, as far as the podcast community has still been, amazing to me um and and that that has like meant the world to me i think it's i've had more podcast people be my support and kind of who i can count on more than family in some you know in some instances so yeah i think it's times like this that you kind of see who people really are and that's hard that's really hard. Um, Perry was such a great guy and had touched so many lives. Um, and I've seen that more than ever over the last few months. And so that's been, that has done my heart some good for sure. Um, and so I've kind of been getting stuff together and I want our kids to really know the type of person that he was and how people really responded to him and appreciated him. And, you know, I'm, as much as I did not want to do a podcast with him, um, I'm so glad I did <laughs> now. Cause that was, that was a big thing. That was, we talked about it when he brought it up. Um, you know, we weren't in a good place mm -hmm. at all when we started talking about podcasting and when he brought it up, but that was my first thing. I was like, Oh, I don't want to talk to you now. I sure don't want to sit down and have these conversations with you every week. Um, but I gave in and, you know, and I, my gosh, thinking back now, I mean, we, I would have never known that this is, you know, how it would have gone about and everything. So to know that I have a year's worth of conversations between him and I, like serious ones too. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and his personality really came out in those episodes. And I think that's going to be just priceless for our kids one day. So I, I could mean, not, I mean, uh, thinking about podcasting, <laughs> I just, it's like such a big thing. I mean, it saved our marriage. So I, I think back to now, like, what if, what if we didn't start podcasting and what if we did go through with the divorce and yeah. then, you know, and, and then he gets diagnosed and then how that would have affected him, our kids and everything. But we were in a, I mean, we were in the best place we had been mm -hmm. um, in 10 years. So that was, a. Uh, it's just so weird how it kind of all played out. Um, you know, and in the beginning, things. last year during the event was one of my favorite things because you guys talked about the origin of Hello Life WTF last year. Yes, on the event, and and he he just like is like very coyly in that Perry way was just like you fell back in love with me. You just yeah, it was so it's true. Funny. I mean, he um, <laughs> and it was kind of one of those things that we realized. Oh well, this is why things aren't working out. We just never talked. If we did, it just wasn't. It wasn't productive mm -hmm. or anything, um, but the podcast, man, it's just such a, when you have to go back and listen to yourself and you're the one editing and hearing how you talk to people or mm -hmm. him in particular or how he talked to me and it was very eye opening. And so I think that was one of the things that kept us going was that it literally saved our marriage. Um, and then even after he was diagnosed, 
Um, so he was diagnosed um, May 2nd. And then we did this. He started, let's see, he started treatment on May 10th. Mm-hmm. And then we did live stream for the cure the week after. Um, and he was doing, obviously, I mean, he was doing okay then. Um, and then, uh, you know, it was, he was pretty determined, you know, and as everybody knew, I mean, he was going to, and he did. And he, man, I've never seen somebody fight something the way that he did. Mm-hmm. And um, I think one thing that we didn't, uh, I think we recorded one episode after he was diagnosed. I can't remember. I seem um, to remember. I seem to remember there was, uh, it was a couple of weeks after live stream for the cure. I remember because yeah. you guys went live in the Facebook group. Yes. And you guys went live in the Facebook group. And that was okay. after, I remember because he, his throat was particularly dry yes. uh, because of the treatments and stuff. And I, so I remember that, you know, he, he was really, really hoarse, but you guys talked for just a few minutes about kind of what was up. Like it was just an update. This is what's going on, mm-hmm. et cetera. And then it was, Hey, we recorded an episode of hello life WTF, yeah. you know? And yeah, I, I, I still remember that. And I just remember like, that was when like right there in the, in the early part of his treatment where yeah. he was like really, really hoarse. Yeah. Um, what Chris Yaney, there's like eight paragraphs of text there. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta refresh that. Uh, let's see, Chris Yaney, uh, let's see, $49 donation for the German country code for Miss Trudy Reichart net via Clarion YMCA. Uh, thank you. So, 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 so much, Christiani, for that $49 donation. <laughs> so much text that I've linked to my, my alert window because of the way I had to design <laughs> the stream overlay this year. It's like down in the corner, like, uh, like Lindsay, because on up here, I have you blown up. You're like mm-hmm. two thirds of the screen, and then me and Dan are just over here on the side over here. And yeah, it's, no, we don't. Not in, I mean, that, that's why I designed the segment overlay like this, but my alert box is like way down in the corner below Dan. <laughs> so if anybody wrote some more, wrote, wow, wrote. writes more than like three words, I can't see it. <laughs> it's like a huge paragraph. So thank you, Chris Yaney, uh, for the $49 donation. But yeah, I, re- I still remember that. The, you guys, I think it recorded one. We did and, one, and then it was after that. Um, mm-hmm. We released that one, and then he couldn't talk at all. Probably mm-hmm. for it was for a while. it was for a good while. Mm-hmm. Um, I was the only one that we were really, that he really communicated with, and it's just in a way we could you know we could finish each other's sentences and stuff. I knew what he was thinking. I knew yeah. what he needed, um, and so that was. That was tough on the kids, just so they couldn't talk. They didn't really understand. Um, we just explained to them, like, in their age, mm-hmm. appropriate, kind of just the treatments were affecting his throat. And once it healed, then he would be able to talk better. And, and he did. Um, the it, I'd never, you know, you hear all these stories about people going through cancer and treatments and you just until you're living it every single day it's it, you just have no idea mm-hmm. and seeing it and being part of it and then every single doctor's visit and hearing you know what they're saying and our, his oncologist was absolutely amazing thankfully i mean he the first thing our first appointment um perry said do, like do not ever sugarcoat anything with me mm-hmm. be straight with me don't don't tell me something that you know kind of half true half not just mm-hmm. you know i want straightforward blunt and and that's what we got and that wasn't easy um mm-hmm. his oncology nurse and i hit it off from day one um, and we still talk today so that's a and she oh, let so like good. she had to move back home the month before he passed away, mm-hmm. she moved back home, um, and but she kept in touch, and we still talk today. Um, so that's been a 
that's been helpful and just somebody that was in that office just as much as we were, saw him, talked to him, you know, got to know our family and that's been really helpful. So, um, but aside, it's just crazy how you just, you lose like family mm-hmm. um, and, and even like close, close friends in times like this. And then people that, you know, people like y'all that we've never met personally, um, faced, you know, all that. It's, they're still here. So. It is uh, from two girls on a bench. Trisha and Shauna, $25 for Perry and for her dad, Dave. Thank you so much. That's sweet. It's just, that's, it's stuff like that. I mean, we've cut up. He kept in touch with as many people as he could all throughout um, because we knew that like we weren't podcasting and, but man, we, that's what's so hard because he had gotten into such a good, good place and went Mm -hmm. back to work. Um, And then we, uh, he was going back to work and we got back into a whole new routine and with his treatment and just the route that we were going and getting back into our podcast and we had already started making notes and what we were going to do and how we were going to continue. Mm-hmm. And I think we even went live in the pod stuff group talking about when we were going to um, come back and start doing interviews again. I seem to remember um, that. Yeah. Yeah. We were like, he was in a really good place. And so that was, sorry if you hear baby screaming. Um, but we, that was probably what, like in, it was October ish around there somewhere because um he had talked about just getting back into it and with the interviews for sure yeah um, and he was doing really good at work now he was stubborn and he argued with the nurse a lot about his hours <laughs> I can um, only imagine <laughs> he i mean this guy was going through in very intense treatment in chemo and they were switching up his chemo and because they knew that some stuff wasn't, he wasn't responding as well. Um, but, you know, when they put him, like they restricted his hours and he was like, oh no, I can do way more than that. And they were like, you just don't understand. No, you can't. Um, and, and that was hard because he, he wanted to push himself, but, you know, they definitely were not going to let him and they, they did have him very, very restricted when he went back to work. Um, but he was, he was like himself. He was, I mean, he could talk fine and he was back to joking around. And, um, the only thing, the only thing he ever complained about was he was a little bit tired after work, which, duh. I mean, you're going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he just kept saying his, his head hurt. Like he just had a headache. Um, and nobody ever really, the thought of any of that being cancer that had spread was never in our mind. That was nowhere because he was doing so good Mm -hmm. and he was back at work and just the headache part. Um, we never, ever thought that Mm -hmm. that was, that that was anything serious until, um, he ended up back in the hospital and they did all the testing and MRI and found it mm-hmm. everywhere. And even then, um, I mean, I know that you followed the posts pretty, oh, yeah. pretty well. So, um, but even then when they did the, when they did the MRI and found that spot, um, his oncologist wasn't even convinced that it was, anything like it that it was a mass or anything that had spread mm-hmm. um and he he was sent home from the hospital and they were thinking it was just like a blood clot from treatment um and we got home from the hospital and his oncologist called like right after we got home and he that's when he said you know I think we need you to come back mm-hmm. and we were like well for what and there was one guy and I want to go find him one day because um, I remember exactly who he was. But there was one guy um, who said who had looked at 
because Harry's case was so, it was rare. Mm -hmm. It like they had said it from the beginning. It was the rarest case they had ever seen and nothing, nothing added up. Mm -hmm. Like there was no family history. There was no, I mean, him having that cancer was very, very rare. Mm -hmm. And then everything that spiraled after it was just like that whole one percent, you know, you fall in that we get that one percent and that's where he fell every single time. Um, so when that one guy came forward and he said, you know, I I wanna test that on his um it was like on the between the stem oh, like yeah. the brain stem and the back is like mm-hmm. <laughs> like his head hurt, but it was more like almost behind the ear but a little bit lower. Right. Um and nobody wanted to touch it mm-hmm. because it was such a very, very sensitive place. Nobody would touch it um, except for this one guy. And he said, let me do it. Let me do a biopsy on it. Mm-hmm. And um, so we went back to the hospital and that's when he did the biopsy. And <coughs> and I asked the guy that day, um, I said, you've been doing this for a long time. Um, and I know we had to wait for results of the biopsy, of course. But um I said, in your opinion, today, as you did that biopsy and you looked at what you were looking at, would you say that that's a blood clot? Mm-hmm. And he said, absolutely not. So we kind of knew yeah. um, before the results came in. Here we go. It is his refusal to accept uh, coins, Jared Taylor, destruction in human form, who is the one that pushed us over $7,500, who literally has been raining money into this event. <laughs> over $1,000, that is probably him. I haven't tallied it up total, but he, Jared, you're amazing, my friend. Uh, that was another $62.79, I believe, to round this off at $8,200. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. 110%. That's crazy. That's so awesome, though. It's amazing. It's, I mean, I'm literally, and you know, to talk j- just, just for a moment about, um, like, like the podcast and community and everything. And, and that was, I think it's one of these communities. And as I've, as I've been part of it and as I've grown it and as I've lived in it for years now, it's like, we take care of our own kind of thing, mm-hmm. you know, okay. like, and we talked about this before we did this year's live stream for the cure a lot, but last year. As you know, of course, because we were on the event, we crushed it. We hit 5500 or so, and then we raised even more money for you and Perry after the fact. But one of the things that killed us the most, and one of the things that perplexed me the most as, as an event planner was no random donations. Zero dollars and zero cents came from people that you couldn't trace back to a guest on the show or something else. So it was, okay, we got to try this year to crack the code. We're going to figure it out. We're going to get random donos, just random people to donate. And we have zero dollars and zero cents from random people again this year. And that we take care of our own. Like I said, it's, it's, that's why when we got the diagnosis, uh, what does this mean? The room is full. There's only three people in here. How is it full? It says somebody's connecting. What the hell? Hang on. I'm refreshing everything. I hope that doesn't break her. (laughs) Hopefully we'll still see her when we come back. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, there's Dan. There's Guest. Who's Guest? Oh, it might have been you. Okay, well, I'm going to go back to the small room. Hang on. After these messages, folks, we'll be right back. Yeah, see, that must be what it is. That's got to be what it is. That was the weirdest thing, and I don't know who or what this is, but beat it. (laughs) Um, it, Yeah, We just tried to switch it because it said somebody was loading in, and then I'm like, okay, let me switch to the larger room because we got the pro up here thing this year, and it accommodates up to 12 people, but as soon as I switched to to that room size... Your microphone and camera was like, nope. What happened? Oh, yes. I can lock the room. I forgot about locking the room. Stay out, people. It's ours. 
Yeah, that's right. This is the green room, so anybody can right. come and go from the green room. I'm the last one, right? So you're it. You're it. You are. We couldn't. Who's going to follow you? Really? Beat uh, this, well. everybody. No, you can't. You know you can't. <laughs> but like, <laughs> that's what I was saying though. Is like when when when. First of all, when you and Perry started Hello Life WTF, and you know that was a raw and and real show, and it was a real look. And you guys talk, uh, you know, about it last year on the event, and you're talking about it even today about how it saved your marriage and everything. And listening through it, you know, like it's it's a great portrait of just you two as a couple like it's it's a great look back like that's going to be great that's going to be so so great for the kids to have to go back through one of these they'll probably listen back and they'll be like did dad really used to say all that stuff to you because every episode of the hello yeah. life wtf tf i ever listened to was perry talking about groping you or something because that was perry. <laughs> so. yeah it could be sweet but yeah <laughs> so it was yeah. like but you right. know there was that and then uh then you guys you know i i think like you guys got into the podcasting community. You guys threw yourselves in whole hog. You guys were like, we mm-hmm. love this. We love the people we're meeting. We love being a part of this community. And I think, I don't know if it was that necessarily that bore the pod stuff or whatever the case may be, but it was, I think if, if I remember correctly, it was just, you guys wanted to give back even then. And that was before mm-hmm. anything had happened because you guys loved the community so much. It's just, it was one of those things that when we started, we, we saw how kind of tough it was to get your name out there. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was more of a, what, what can we do to help people get their name out there? Mm -hmm. Um, We, we didn't really want anything in it for us. Um, But we had gotten to know quite a few people and we knew that we had people that we could talk to and kind of help out and then maybe go from there. Um, And we, Man, just in that that one one little season that we did <clears throat> with those episodes and people that we talked to and met, um, at some pretty pretty amazing friendships were formed uh, just in that time. Um, and I think you know you always hear everything happens for a reason, um, and and I, that is absolutely the truth because mm-hmm. it was. You know, Perry got so, so much support from so many people um, that he had really grown to just absolutely love um, Mm. as friends and really just people that we considered our own family uh, that we never even met. But it was just kind of one of those things we got into that community and I mean, it would just, I'd never, we've never been part of something like that. Mm-hmm. And that's been great even today. I mean, I'm here today still. So which we <laughs> and adore. he's not. So it's 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 been great. We really, really uh, appreciate you. You know, giving some of your time. And I know a lot of this stuff. You know, it's probably not anything that you necessarily enjoy talking about anyway. But you know that you, that you're willing to at least share whatever. You don't have to tell us anything you don't want to necessarily on the air. We're never gonna. Oh, after Barry, I'm guessing that's supposed to be after burn. Seven thirty nine, seven dollars and thirty nine cents. I think you're challenging Jared now. And uh, sometimes Geek makes a great point over in the chat. They say we were just giving back for all the friendships you guys made with connecting us through your shows and groups, and that's also true because when you talk about the networking aspect of this, this whole thing is all about meeting people and then meeting people through people. I'm a huge fan, for example, of uh, yesterday evening, we had Sean Ennis, Stories of Your and Yours, on the show, uh, who Dan, you know, found in the podcasting community and who I just adore him. And he's he's such a good, just amazing podcaster. And that's what one of those things that, that the pod stuff gave to people and even the hello life group, because the hello life group, I think was always more active than the pod stuff group, even though the pod stuff group was about, (laughs) you know, connecting with and and, and reaching out to other shows. But like I said, we take care of our own. And that's Mm -hmm. why like this year, like that money right there, uh, $8,207 and 39 cents. Thank you, Leo. That all that has been raised by podcasters or people who are directly associated therewith um 
I mean, a few, like, I know I have friends and stuff that don't necessarily podcast, like, close friends, but, like, when you talked earlier about, like, family and, and you, like, you kind of find out who people are, and mm-hmm. I remember being upset after last year's live stream for The Cure, and I kind of went through, like, a purge of, of my personal life, like, of mm-hmm. of people who just didn't, and still, even still, like, even I, I look at it now and I'm like thinking of all I can help of when I think of when I look at that number and think of all the people out there is like the people that didn't do anything. And it's I don't want to try to make it negative like that, but I almost in a way like can't help it because I am built to just reach out there to just be part of that community to just be somebody who just wants to give back endlessly. Mm-hmm. And I think that was what I love the most about Perry because Perry, I know was the same way. And like, mm-hmm. it always stuck with me when I was on for a restaurant, which when I canceled and finally closed that show down, I could hear him yelling at me in my head that. And when I walked out of yeah. Avengers end game, I could hear him yelling at me, <laughs> yep. fucking Barry. Uh, but mm-hmm. I just, when, when we were, did the pod stuff, one of the things he said during that interview was he called me the Mark Marin of indie podcasting, which I, I wish number like that. I wish that I got Marin numbers, but uh, it just that Perry thought like that much of me, like that Perry thought anything like that of me. Like I wanted to, whenever I get that from people, I want to feed it back at other people, you know, and I want to, you know, build other people up the way that Perry would build people up. That's why that's why I love that guy. <laughs> he, was, mm-hmm. he was so good at you're both so good at that on the show, and that's why like the pod stuff especially was so so amazing. And there's the answer from Jared Taylor. Twelve dollars and sixty one cents to round it off to eighty two twenty. Because he he's not about change. We're almost at hundred and ten percent now, guys. You guys gotta do it now, right? It's gotta happen here. But yeah, that was that and and Whenever something like what happens uh, to Perry happened, you know, whenever you you lose people like that that are that are around you that are that are people that just give back so much, I feel like even like more determined that there's uh, that there's just people you have to give back more. Like I feel like even more incentivized to to just give back to people and Mm -hmm. it's just like i said that's that's what i loved the most about him was that he he was so selfless when he gave and that was just amazing yeah people have asked me um about the podcast and what my plans are what i'm gonna do um moving forward and it's it's kind of it's not funny but it's funny um, because we did have an episode of Hello Life where we joked around about if something happened to one of us. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, this was like way before. Um, and he, I, oh, I remember getting so mad at him, but laughing because uh, he was saying, you know, whenever he died or whatever, that we could just, I could keep going and call it Hello Death, WTF or something. And I was like, there's no <laughs> way. Um, but that was like such a big, it was such a big joke for us when, um, when we would talk about what if something happened to one of us, um, and what would happen with the podcast and, um, that, you know, obviously, unfortunately, uh, hello live that that's going to be done with. There's no way I could do that, that one without him. I couldn't imagine. Um, there's just, there's no way. Um, I think the last released thing of him and I was um, from, I think Matt yep. uh, released our, an interview that we did with him. Um, I haven't some, listened uh, to it. He sent, he no sent some of that over to us uh, Friday, Friday afternoon. We played, uh, he, he cut some of that together into a little pre-recorded piece that we played on the air, which was really, really nice. It was really, really nice. I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful that he sent it over. Plus all the, like a bunch of Spotify links and stuff like that, that we yes. spammed all through the chat. Um, I haven't, for, for um, music. I haven't listened to that interview. We've, uh, I remember us doing it. I remember, uh, you know, Perry was, I think he was kind of struggling talking. Mm-hmm. Um, you could hear it in his voice then. 
Um, but I haven't listened to it. I know that he released it and he asked me beforehand because that was actually going to be something that, um, we released through hello life. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we just obviously never got there. And, um, he kind of reached out and was like, I don't mind releasing it. I'll edit. I mean, he did everything with it. We never touched it again. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was all him. Uh, so I will go back and listen to that eventually. Um, but I've, I, I wouldn't sit here and say that I'm just a hundred percent done with podcasting because I don't, um, I don't really see that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've have some ideas going around in my head of, of what I would do or what I would kind of like to do maybe moving forward. Um, but I haven't, I'm not there yet. I, yeah, that's a, that's going to be, that's going to take some time. Um, cause that was, that was just such a me and him thing. And, yeah. um, but I, I do feel like it's something he would want me to continue and he would, he would want me to move forward. And, um, you know, one of the big things for me now is, is keeping him around really, um, mm-hmm getting his story out there and cause it's such a rare, scary one. I mean, I, I would have never thought I'd be a widow in my thirties, mm-hmm. you know, with young kids. And I hate that word, but it, it's true. It, it is who I am. And, um, you know, and, and I think it's important for, you know, other people to know that if they're going through it too, that they're not alone. I mean, I, I can relate and I get it. And so I think it's, it's something just kind of going around in my brain to move forward. And that's a hard, those are two hard words is moving forward, (laughs) but you know, but you do it whether you want to or not, I guess, but. I want to give you some sentiments uh, (laughs) over here from in the chat. Uh, Also, Mike from the Mike, Mike and Oscar podcast. They were on yesterday. Thank you guys so much. Um, Talking top films of 2019, which I didn't have much to say during. Uh, But he said, Nick, you're the Iron Man of podcastings. And this interview has been the highlight of my consumption of this incredible event, which is saying so much. Uh, Great job, everybody. And Lindsay, you're heroic and inspiring to us all. Thank you for sharing your story here. Uh, Adam from Odd Dan Out said he listened to that interview, the Nooks and Crannies interview, and five minutes later, that was when he went on Facebook and saw that Perry had passed. Uh, and then we have a lot of people just seconding also Mike and being like, absolutely. Jared Taylor, again, our, I mean, literally, we call him our most loyal soldier, uh, but we absolutely adore Jared. Lindsay, I wish you nothing but the best going forward, and here's to brighter days ahead. You guys, please, uh, whatever you guys want to say, please drop it over there in the chat. Uh, I know I appreciate it. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but don't make it about me. Make it about Lindsay. I hate making things about me. Yeah. And Perry, it was really funny too, because Perry yelled at me about that last year on the event. Cause I, I hate taking credit for things and I hate spotlights shining on me. All I want to do is give back. I don't want like, you know, somebody to be like, Hey, Nick, tell us all about this thing. And I'm like, eh, like I shrink away from that. And, and Perry was like yelling at me last year during the event. He's mm-hmm. like, he called us dummies. Me and Justin's like, you two dummies. <laughs> he loved the spotlight though. Like, yeah. Was, he, he was okay with taking the spotlight. That was, and that's why I, I, I was okay. If he was like sitting next to me, because I don't, this is, this mm-hmm. is way out of my comfort zone. So I was okay with him wanting the spotlight because it took it off of me, but I do appreciate people saying that. That's, it's hard. It's, um, people have, I mean, people have been great and reached out and sent messages. And, um, I, I don't see myself in some of the words that they use like that. Um, uh, I, to me, it's just, this is, this is my story now and this is, kind of where I am and, um, and I, I owe it to, to him and, you know, the years that he loved me and took care of me. And, um, I, I think it's just, it's important to keep, keep his memory alive and especially for our kids and, um, a funny, funny Perry story. Um, oh my. We knew, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, 
in this, like he, um, he made the decision to stop treatment. That was, right. that was a very hard personal decision. I was worried that he was going to do it after we moved. Um, because his big thing was, he kept saying, I want us to get out from underneath this house. And mm-hmm. you kind of know where everything we had gone through with that house. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. And so his big thing was, if anything happens to me, I, I don't want you, like, I want to get out from underneath this house and kind of be somewhere simple and rent somewhere for now. And, you know, and, and at the time he was like, well, we can rent for a year or two and then we'll, you know, figure things out. Mm-hmm. So we we did, and we moved um, December first, and um, we got moved, and kind of, and that's what's crazy. I mean, he helped move that day. It was December first. Um, he helped move. Uh, we uh, let's see. He had treatment like that week and stuff. We went back to the old house and kept moving things to where I am now, um, and uh, we kind of got a little bit settled in. Um, and then it was December 19th. Uh, we were, I was getting, we were getting ready to take him to treatment. Um, and that was the, that was the first time, um, that he couldn't get ready by himself. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I was helping him and I helped him get ready and I helped him get dressed and everything. Um, and, and that kind of knew, that day, um, that, that was probably going to be it. Mm -hmm. Uh, he had always told me from day one, if I ever get to a place where I can't do things for myself, um, I don't want to do it. Uh, so that day when I knew I had to help him, I, I didn't say anything. Um, I knew that he was kind of processing some things himself. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of went in the kitchen was getting ready and he walked in there and sat down at the table and he said, I'm done. And that was, um, I kind of looked at him and he said, I, I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. And I said, okay. Um, I called the cancer center, canceled all his appointments. Um, I knew that it wasn't, there wasn't going to be any conversation about it, any talking back and forth about it. Any, I knew that when he made that decision, it was going to be, that was going to be it. That was his decision that he had to make. Um, and that was a very tough one because a lot of people, um, don't agree with it. Um, but after seeing him go through everything he had gone through, I was relieved, Mm -hmm. honestly. Um, that was a, that's hard to kind of say, uh, but I was because he was just absolutely miserable Mm -hmm. and, um, he kind of looked at it as I'm, I'm going to stop treatment. And, and I think at the time in his mind, it was, he would feel better for a little bit mm-hmm. um, because of, you know, not doing the treatment anymore because the treatment was having a horrible effect on him. Um, but he stopped and um, actually hospice came out that day mm-hmm. um, and they had a conversation with him and they, fully explained everything like you we want to know that you fully understand what you're doing and he said yes and that was they had a lot of conversations with him that day because they knew he was in his right mind um and i actually recorded that conversation Mm -hmm. um because like for our kids later Mm -hmm. if they want to know kind of the story and where he kind of came to that decision i want them to be able to hear it from him Mm -hmm. so i did record that conversation that he had with hospice and um, he was very straightforward, very honest. And I, I mean, I couldn't do anything but support him. And, um, and I told him, I thought it was just absolutely the bravest decision anybody can make. I mean, he, he took, to me, I looked at it as it was a very brave decision to say, I am not going to allow this to, control me and control my body and control how I am, I'm going to take control. And then however he went about it after that, then that was his decision. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was a very, you know, and and I did see firsthand that a lot of people don't think that way, um, but that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion and how they want to think. But him and I, that's all I really cared about. 
I Mm -hmm. I only cared about how he felt about it um, and what he wanted to do and how he wanted to go. And so it was that day that he, he said, um, he made the decision. Don't put me in hospital. Um, don't put me anywhere. Mm -hmm. Don't, um, don't let me leave this house. Um, and we had, those were the hard conversations that we had that week. And, um, just the, how he really wanted to go and at home and in his bed and with us around. And that's exactly what happened. And, and I think it was, there was an episode of hello life. I think it was the last one that we released. Um, he cried, like he teared up talking about Christmas Mm -hmm. coming up or like this last Christmas or whatever. And I remember saying to him to that day, I was like, you're going to be here on Christmas. Like, there's no doubt about it. You're going to be here. Mm -hmm. Um, And he was, but he wasn't. Um, That was a really, that was really hard. I mean, he was here for Christmas, um, but, but it, but it wasn't like, it wasn't him. Yeah. Um, We knew like that was, that was about when like everything was just shutting down and I knew like he hadn't eaten in about two weeks and so I, I mean, I knew I'm, I, when things like this kind of come up, I do my own research. Yeah. <laughs> I need to be prepared. Um, so people always say, don't Google this, don't Google that. And I don't listen. I do it. And, um, <laughs> I, but but that, you know, some people don't want to know what's coming. Mm. I needed to know. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad I did. And I, I talked to hospice and I said, look, this is what I've read. Is this true? And then she said, okay. And she gave me a whole booklet. Like, if you want to know step-by-step, step, this is what's about to happen. And I said, okay. Um, and it, they weren't, they weren't kidding. They weren't lying. It was literally step-by-step. Step. Um, and the only thing I told him, um, cause he did get to a point of, um, nobody could understand him, but me mm-hmm. if he talked. Um, and so that was, a. I, I got in touch with everybody to come visit him if they wanted to, if they, some people didn't want to see him that way, which I understood that completely. Um, but I knew that closure was going to be a huge, huge deal for him mm-hmm. with a lot of people. Um, and several people did make the trip. Um, his, his family had like planned on coming um, like January 4th. Um, and I called them and I said, I, you should probably come sooner. Um, and they did, thankfully. Yeah. Uh, so his family came and um, everybody came. Everybody that he wanted to kind of come see him did. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was after after that I was thinking, okay, well, this is going to be it. But then I told them, I was like, wait a minute. Um, you owe me like a New Year's Eve kiss. So you you're not going anywhere um, if I have anything to say about it. And mind you, he couldn't really talk or anything, but he, I knew. um, And he just, he kind of shook his head and he said, okay. Um, And he, he did. He lasted through New Year's Eve. um, And then New Year's Day, you know, I told him happy New Year's and all that. But uh, that was, I knew on New Year's Day that it wasn't very far. Mm -hmm. Um, we had had a very, very, very rough week. Um, that that's that's the only probably conversation that I'll probably won't ever have with anybody. Um, and that's like the kids and stuff. I don't ever want them to picture him and in the way that things happened yeah. throughout that week. Um, and so that was that was very hard. Um, but that's when I knew, and I knew that it wasn't him. Mm-hmm. I knew that it was just the illness and stuff kind of taking over. Mm-hmm. And, um, but once, once he was like, I got him like lay down and situated and stuff in the bed. It was about, um, I want to say six o'clock in the morning on January 2nd. Um, and I got him situated and got him did all his medicines and did all that stuff. And then I called his hospice nurse and um, I said, I want you to come and check like his blood pressure and stuff. 
And um, so she did. And she said, it's this, this is it. Like he's probably not going to wake back up. And um, I said, okay. And so I prepared the kids. I talked to them that morning. Um, That was a, but at the same time, it was kind of a, you don't want to do it, but you're, you're there, you're in it and you, you don't ever know how you're going to handle that situation until it's right there in front of you. Mm-hmm. Um, and once she said it wasn't going to be long, I made sure. And uh, cause I know people had already told me, I don't want you to be by yourself um, when he goes. And so I'd called uh, actually like one of my best friends since middle school, she showed up like right away and she's a teacher. Like she, she left um, and came and my sister came and, um, like my niece McKenna was here and stuff, but uh, they uh, they let me just kind of lay there with them and talk to him. And it was one of those things people always say that like when you're in that process, you don't let go until the one person gives you permission to. Yeah. And I've never really believed that. Um, and that was something because I kept telling him, you're not going anywhere. Um <laughs> You know, but, but then I just saw how miserable he was. Um, and so it was when it was just him and I laid there and I, I told him it was okay. Um, and he passed away not long after. And so it's kind of when he did, it was that shock, that initial shock, obviously, but knowing that he went the way that he wanted to, knowing that every single thing like how he lined it out that's what happened um he was on hospice so there was no big scene with like ambulances and fire trucks we didn't have to call 911 we didn't have to we didn't have to scare the kids with all of that you know and that was a huge huge thing for for him um and then once the the kids came in there and we all laid in the bed with him and loved on him and the kids hugged on him and that was really hard, but I think so needed. Yeah, It was, that was really hard for me to see, but I know that they needed that. Mm -hmm. Um, And we didn't ever shield them from any of this. So it was, they knew what was coming. Um, The only, only thing that I hid from them or kept from them um, was when they came to get them. From the house, yeah. I didn't want them to see him being taken out. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was the only thing that I kept the kids from. But everything else, they were full and hundred percent part of. If I, you know, would ask them if they wanted to help give medicine, um, just so. I mean, and as hard as it's been, there's I think a little bit in their mind of they're glad they don't see him sick anymore um so that that was a big one uh but really since then they they kind of kids are it's crazy you always hear kids are resilient but Mm -hmm. man they are um it it's not always easy for sure but um my funny Perry's story um, back to that was when he, he had said when he passed away, he wanted to be cremated. And so that was, I always knew that, Mm -hmm. um, that he even told like the hospice people and everything. And so, uh, and they asked him, you know, why he kind of went that route just out of curiosity. Um, And I I said, I can answer that for you because one, um, he's very claustrophobic and his one of his fears is being buried alive. He mm-hmm. does not ever want to be put like six feet under. He just he just doesn't. <laughs> so he wants to be cremated. And then um they said, Well, are you gonna like spread his ashes anywhere? And I said, No, because he has a fear of drowning. And he told me that if he's ever thrown in water or something, he would come back and find me. So <laughs> nope. I didn't. <laughs> I did not bury him. I didn't Mm. spread ashes anywhere. Um, He is literally on the TV stand in the living room. Um, The kids kind of 
I, I think you saw it. You're like, I got that Red Sox urn. Yep. Um, and I had it engraved and everything. And so it's where we put his ashes and it's um, up on the next on the TV stand. And then there's a, a frame of me and him that he had cut by the bed that's next to it. His glasses, his watch, wedding rings, um, a thing that the kids had given him at this last Christmas um, that's there. And then they want to do a big, like a, right above it, is the wall's blank. Mm-hmm. And so when we're all ready, it'll be like a big um, kind of memorial wall for, for him and then whatever pictures the kids pick out and stuff. So mm-hmm. it's been, I mean, it's only been four months and so it's, it is still fresh and new and, um, but it's, you know, we've had a lot of, we have had a lot of laughs and, um, good days and bad days. And so I think that's just kind of our journey now. Um, one day at a time and some will be good, some will be bad. And it really sucks when everybody's having a bad one (laughs) (laughs) or if you're having a good one and somebody else is having a bad one and you're kind of like, uh, um, but for the most part, I'm the only thing I'm worried about in the near future is father's day. Yeah. Um, I'm really, really worried about that, but we got hit with some, like he passed away on January 2nd and his birthday was in January. Our anniversary was February. Valentine's day was February. Mm -hmm. Daughter's birthday was February. We just had my son's birthday. And so we've been hit with a lot Mm -hmm. in a very short amount of time. But, um, I do have the, my grandbaby, I guess you could say living with me now. And, Mm -hmm. um, that's been tough because, Harry was very, very excited about the baby. Um, that was a, it's a journey that we were excited to go on together. Um, but to have them living here and that's a, it's a good distraction for me right now. Yeah. Um, I kind of, I didn't really want to be in our room anyways, so I gave them our, my room and yeah, um, that was a, that's been a good distraction. And then, just one day at a time working. I'm not yet. So that'll come later. Figure it out later. But for now, it's just do what we can when we can. So that's and it. A lot more love over in the chat. Uh, let's see. I can't see any of that. No, no, it's, <laughs> I probably could on the app, but I can't. So yeah, it's, it's like, it, that way. It's it's easier that way because then you'd have to have multiple things open, and who yeah. knows what'll happen. Uh, but you had um, Kate from Ignorance was Bliss said, "Courage isn't not feeling scared; it's feeling scared, but doing it anyway." Uh, Melissa from the Brook Reading Podcast, and this is the, this is the, the great thing about the community is, is I heard this over and over in the lead up, especially in like the week or two before this event, is podcasters that had never met you, podcasters that started podcasts after you you know, you guys did podcasts and everything. Uh, You still had an effect on, she said, uh, you seem like a very strong, resilient lady. I wish you nothing but peace and love moving forward. Uh, Adam, very poignantly. I mean, yeah, it is. When you were talking about uh, Perry, yeah, he never wanted to burden you. Never, ever wanted to burden you or the kids. So yeah, Adam was like, yeah, Perry wasn't one to want someone to need to wipe his ass or anything. That was definitely Perry. He never, ever, ever wanted to burden you with anything mm-hmm. and Chris Yaney just hearts and God bless. Stay strong. Sean from what does it matter? Sending tons of love and good vibes. So, you know, thank you. I, I cannot, I, I literally cannot thank you enough for uh, just taking, like I said, some of your time to oh, stop thank by you. the life. Again, tour. Whether you want to be here or not, I was going to be here. So. <laughs> she, she, she like keep crashing in the room. Let me <laughs> I'm knocking. You better answer. I'll just keep knocking. Oh, but yeah, we, I I mean, I mean, literally, I I, I can't express enough how not only, not only joining us on the live stream for the cure, but also sharing, um, you know, all the, all just basically kind of the, the lead up to, you know, Perry passing and everything. That was just part of the story for hello life. That was never, that never got told. Um, He wanted, he wanted to continue the podcast throughout the whole journey and um and it was just something we never got to do and mm-hmm. so 
he wanted it to, he wanted the podcast to kind of have like a closure type thing. Um, and, and it didn't. Uh, so I know that, um, just kind of a lot of people just don't, they know that he was diagnosed, that he was doing treatment, that he really wasn't feeling good, that he was doing great, went back to work, still doing great. And then passed away. Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of a, everybody was, it was a shock, I think, just to, to several, several people. And, um, and I don't think it mattered how many posts we did trying to explain how bad things had gotten very, very fast. Um, it, it was literally like one day he was working, doing great. And it just spiraled very, very fast down downhill after that and not nobody expected it and so I mean it was a that was a shock to everybody and that was a hard post to make that he had that he had passed away and so because I knew a lot of people weren't gonna a lot of people just didn't believe it that was a hard that was tough yeah so it just happened really really fast nobody yeah. thought it would I it certainly remember that. like even he just didn't. following along, I remember that that it was, it was such a such a quick progression, yeah. uh, of, of everything that had happened. Everything was, and, and I, I still remember all the posts and everything that you had made, saying everything's great, everything's good, everything's you know everything's going super well. He's going back to work. He's restricted. I still remember you, you talking about um, when 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 he was arguing with with doctors and stuff like that. Like, no, no, I can I can totally work all the time. Oh, I'm fine. And that's a such a Perry thing. <laughs> he tried, but no, nope, uh, didn't happen. What's up? More love for you over in the chat. Uh, Adam says Lindsay's just as much a part of this event as Epic Film Guys. It wouldn't be right without her. I agree. Uh, Jared says you have to close out the event every year from now on. So that's that's it. So start committing Deal. yourself every May. Deal. Every May you have to be uh, you have to be prepared to to come on the air and. Um, I'm you know, um, okay with that. I don't know. I whatever, whatever. If you do or don't ever podcast again, uh, we're gonna love you anyway. Doesn't matter. Um, the community will still rally around you and love you anyway. Doesn't matter. Um, of course, we will gladly, you know, pick you up and whatever. If you ever do get behind the microphone again, we'll pick you up <laughs> and we'll be like, yeah, let's do it. Thinking you know, about it. We'll just see. don't start a movie podcast because they suck. Oh, Everybody hates not. them. <laughs> that would be that would be a Perry thing. That I can't. I can't yeah, do that. I mean, I, this, if nothing else shows how much I love the guy, was going to see Endgame by myself. I know. I, I, I saw that. three hour movie that I went and saw by myself because, I mean, I was there was no way I was going to see it with anybody else. That was just our thing. We went to the Hippodrome, every Marvel movie, and I did. I was like, okay. Uh, and then I did take the kids to see it later, but. Mm-hmm. I knew that initial, that there was no other way I was going to go see that. But anyway, and my, you know, my 17 year old was like, I'll skip school and go with you. And I was like, no, because mm-hmm. um, I did the morning show like we would have done. And uh, with that, that was one of, <laughs> that was one of my favorite things last year during the event was. Oh gosh! Talking about the the kids graduating, and you were yelling at them. You were like, you know, like no, you got to like focus on important things, like kids graduating and, and yeah. kids getting married and stuff. He's like, no, that that it's probably not even ever going to happen anyway. But yeah, the next Avengers movie, I have to know. <laughs> He's like, that's set yeah, in stone. Close, that's coming. <laughs> yeah, because my son graduates next Saturday, mm-hmm. and so that was that was a conversation before they announced like the release date and stuff. Mm-hmm. He was like, I mean, if it falls on graduation, we're going <laughs> to, we can drop him off. We can go back and, like, oh my God. Uh, yeah, I mean, thankfully it was released before that, but yeah. You drop him off. You'd be standing at the exit, be like looking at the watch, like he, you're outside keeping the car running just like yeah. right there. And he's like, got a camera, like holding it up inside the door, like <laughs> looking back toward the car. <laughs> no, he would have been like, it's. It's a three hour long movie. Graduation's probably gonna last just as long. We'll be fine. <laughs> he would have I don't know. He pro- he would have made sure he saw that movie. First thing. So I had to do the same thing. 
wasn't the same, but you know, I I knew him well enough that I knew the conversations that would have been had after that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I I thought about it's like man, and like I told you, if he had been here for this event, he wouldn't have shut up about it. This whole thing would have been him yelling at me. Whole thing. Yeah, it would have been all about in game. So. <laughs> So there like, you go. Yeah. You got lucky. It. I didn't. Shut up. <laughs> I won't go into the whole three hour long end game movie. <laughs> a great would, movie though. Would have been the whole thing. Literally. Yeah. And I, that, I remember talking to you about it too when you went and saw it. Maybe. Literally this entire hour plus whatever it's been. Literally whole thing would have been. Oh, Drew, are you finally checking out? Ten minutes before the end, Drew? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Drew Hallam. Uh of real feels he has been on the air with us not on the air but he has been with us in the chat literally every single minute of this entire event which has been absolutely amazing he did a thousand every thousand dollars that we hit uh drew just did shots of moonshine which we which we really appreciated we brought him in and then he would do them live on the air really quick it was really, really amazing. Oh, I um, saw him do one mm-hmm. when I was in the other waiting. Yeah, which was that was yeah. still so weird. Still more uh, fun things to figure out in terms of in terms of technology. But um, if any last words, anything? Because I know you're you're not doing podcasting or anything like that, so <laughs> you don't have anything to plug necessarily. But just any any last words that you want to leave us with on the stream before we wrap things up. Um, man, that's a, that's a really tough one, but, um, first, thank you. Um, thank you for this weekend and what you guys do. And, um, I I mean, obviously cancer is like just my core is just such a huge, huge part for me now. And, um, always cared before, but when it hits you, it hits you. Uh, Mm -hmm. so just what you guys do and y'all do this every year and, uh, it's, truly truly amazing it speaks so much for who y'all are and so i know you don't like the spotlight on you but there it is y'all are (laughs) y'all are great and you know and perry had said it from from the very beginning when we met you guys and just just very genuine and we know that this is such a huge huge thing for y'all and so to know that you hit your goal yesterday way ahead of time that's that speaks volumes. It was crazy. Like I mean, and, and it was we as we watched it go and watched it go, and it was around when Afterburn was on uh, yesterday evening, and I think Kitty. I can't remember the exact <laughs> excuse me the exact amount that Kitty had said that they had raised, but it was somewhere in the neighborhood. We were already at well, like f- we had just passed over five thousand dollars, like a segment or two before that. We had passed last year's goal, and then she said, oh, yeah, we raised, like, $850 or whatever amongst their whole friends and family and all their fans and reached out to everybody and, you know, donated it all in a lump sum. And I think that was the final catalyst that really pushed us, like, even further. I think from the moment that that money hit on, we were less than $1,000 to go, and I think it just kind of became a a fever from there. Like, we got to go. We got to get it. We got to get it. We got to donate. We got to get there. (laughs) But y'all yeah. did it. I it mean, was went above. So I'm I had really to eat this like, stupid thing, this chip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, really, really excited to kind of see where where next year takes takes y'all, <sighs> and definitely a hundred percent there be a part of it and be a whole. I'll be on a whole different journey by then, and that's uh that's news to come. But I have plans and I have things and in the works and and I'm excited it's um, conversations that Perry and I had promises that I made to him and those are hard promises to keep but mm-hmm. um, he deserves it and I um, could not could not be more thankful that this was done for him and in his honor and I know have no no doubt that he's proud and proud of you guys and so that's a that's huge we that's are proud that's of my you. goal now is just moving forward to make him proud. So I know this is a big one for him. Well, we are and proud of you. Thank you 
so, so much for joining us for the last, I don't know, hour and a half, however long it's been, um, telling us your story and, and, and sharing all the wonderful stuff about Perry. Um, we are going to say goodbye to Lindsay uh, for, and she'll be back next year. It's, Adam said it's got to happen now. Oh, we got another donation coming in on the system. Interrupted Tales, another $15 donation. Sending love and there was a whole bunch of asterisks. I don't know what those meant. <laughs> it's so weird the way... Oh, well, we got even more. Adam from Odd Dad Out. Uh, $1.99. I think he's trying to go Jared Taylor into making more donations. Uh, so we really, really really appreciate you coming on the stream and everything this year. Thank you so, so much, Lindsay. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, live stream for the cure three, the third annual live stream for the cure uh, wrapping up again, a huge shout out to all of our amazing podcast partners. Uh, hashtag moonshine for drew uh, mm -hmm. hashtag <laughs> real feel sweatshop. <laughs> Paul Chomo ate a scorpion in a tarantula. Did he really? He did. And oh, oh my he, he wanted to wait in the segment and like let donations come in and stuff. And nope, like donations hit like within five minutes. He was eating all the bugs. It didn't matter. He didn't have a choice. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh. I got to talk to him. I'm going to. That's crazy. It was. It was absolutely wonderful. So all of our amazing podcast partners, everybody that helped us raise money for the goal. Thank you all so, so much. Thank you all, everybody out there that shared their amazing stories and everything with us throughout the entire event. Uh, I honestly, I, I'll be 100% honest, I had the notion that we wouldn't quite hit it. I didn't know if we were going to make it this year uh, coming into the event. And there's somebody else throwing money in there. Gerald from Two Peas on a Pod, $40 donation. Thank you very much, Gerald Morris. Take care of that baby. Oh, Don't give it a beard, though. Uh, I did have one thing before I forget, but remind me. You're not going to get to talk now because everybody's doing it. <laughs> Go ahead. Who was that one? Who was that from? That was uh, Julio from the Contrarians Podcast, $10.99. Well, actually, you know what? I need to refresh <laughs> another thing, too. Uh-oh. I hear the cat. He's mad. He's been mad since this morning. Oh, stop. Oh, he's fine. He's just fat. <laughs> he can't help it. But yeah, um... Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, okay. just again, uh, 83. Somebody, come on, get us to 8,300 before we go off the air. Come on. What's get it, it at? There. <laughs> well, here, here's my one thing for any, like, um, any podcasters listening. Oh, right. Here we go. Here we go. Kate, ignorance was bliss. $5 donation. Thank you, Kate. Now it's, now it's quiet until I start talking again. <laughs> Okay, for any podcasters listening, or if y'all can get the word out, for anybody that Perry and I recorded with, um, if you have those recordings um, or any maybe screenshots or pictures that you took of us recording together, uh, would you please, please get those to me? Um, somehow, some way we can figure that out. But that's really something that I, I kind of want um, cause I know that we recorded with so many people and I know people kind of took pictures that maybe I don't even know about and but those are worth a lot right now. Drew Hallam, Real Feels Podcast, $7 and two cents. There it is. $8,300. We're oh just God. over 110% of our goal. Thank you all so, so much for all Did the you? amazing donations and everything. And yes, That's please. So awesome. If you have any recordings, any photos, anything like that from any of your appearances on the pod stuff or whatever the case may be, or just sitting down with Perry and Lindsay, please find her and whatever. Send them to us. We'll send them to her. Doesn't matter. We'll make sure just that we to, can connect to you. Those are priceless for me right now. So that's a, I'm just trying to get it from any, anywhere I can. Right, well, we love so you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much you. for being here, for being part 
of live stream for the cure. Huge shout out to this guy across the table from me, executive producer Dan Brennick, who I mean, I literally he's raising his hands. Look at he's got he give me this look. He's giving me this. Thank Gary you so has much. That shirt. <laughs> oh, the Deadpool <laughs> shirt. Yeah. He has it. <laughs> yeah. This is a Luke Crate shirt. Yep. Uh, I was going to say, it's Loot Crate. He busted his ass uh, literally the whole weekend helping all the guests and everything get ready before their segments. It was, you know, invaluable because I would not have been able to do it. There's still so much I didn't even get a chance to get done um, before the end of the event. But that is it. We are going to roll out, ladies and gentlemen, on the third annual live stream for The Cure. Thank you so, so much, everybody out there, for watching, for listening, for all of your amazing support. I promise I will not play that Kazoo Kid video anymore ever again in perpetuity throughout the universe. No more kazoo, kid. <laughs>